But to any healthy church, there are two things that always creep up that take away the health. And uh, those two things are gossip and complaining. And we're going to watch this video, um, which will kind of lead us into that discussion. Of course, if it opens up on the wrong page. There we go. We all start life as one single cell. Then that cell divides and we are two cells. Then four. Then eight. Cells form tissues. Tissues form organs. Organs form us. These cell divisions, by which we go from a single cell to a hundred trillion cells, are called growth. And growth seems like a simple thing because when we think of it, we typically think of someone getting taller, or later in life, wider. But to cells, growth isn't simple. Cell division is an intricate chemical dance that's part individual, part community-driven. And in a neighborhood of a hundred trillion cells, sometimes things go wrong. Maybe an individual cell's set of instructions, or DNA, gets a typo, what we call a mutation. Most of the time the cell senses mistakes and shuts itself down, or the system detects a troublemaker and eliminates it. But enough mutations can bypass these fail-safes, driving the cell to divide recklessly. That one rogue cell becomes two, then four, then eight. At every stage, the incorrect instructions are passed along to the cell's offspring. Weeks, months, or years after that one rogue cell transformed, you might see your doctor about a lump in your breast. Difficulty going to the bathroom could reveal a problem in your intestine, prostate, or bladder. Or a routine blood test might count too many white cells or elevated liver enzymes. Your doctor delivers the bad news. It's cancer. From here, your strategy will depend on where the cancer is and how far it's progressed. If the tumor is slow growing and in one place, surgery might be all you need, if anything. If the tumor is fast growing or invading nearby tissue, your doctor might recommend radiation or surgery followed by radiation. If the cancer has spread or if it's inherently everywhere like a leukemia, your doctor will most likely recommend chemotherapy or a combination of radiation and chemo. Radiation and most forms of chemo work by physically shredding the cell's DNA or disrupting the copying machinery. But neither radiation nor chemotherapeutic drugs target only cancer cells. Radiation hits whatever you point it at, and your bloodstream carries chemotherapeutics all over your body. So what, what happens when different cells get hit? Let's look at a healthy liver cell, a healthy hair cell, and a cancerous cell. The healthy liver cell divides only when it's stressed. The healthy hair cell divides frequently, and the cancer cell divides even more frequently and recklessly. When you take a chemotherapeutic drug, it will hit all of these cells. And remember that the drugs work typically by disrupting cell division, so every time a cell divides, it opens itself up to attack. And that means that the more frequently a cell divides, the more likely the drug is to kill it. So remember that hair cell? It divides frequently and isn't a threat. And there are other frequently dividing cells in your body, like skin cells, gut cells, and blood cells. So the list of unpleasant side effects of cancer treatment parallels these tissue types. Hair loss, skin rashes, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, weight loss, and pain. That makes sense because these are the cells that get hit the hardest. So in the end, it's all about growth. Cancer hijacks cells' natural division machinery and forces them to put the pedal to the metal growing rapidly and recklessly. But using chemotherapeutic drugs, we take advantage of that aggressiveness, and we turn cancer's main strength into a weakness. Did everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you hear what he said at the end? They take the, the, can the cancer cell's strength and they turn it into a weakness against it to help stop the cancer. Everybody kind of get that? Okay. So... Why? Why is why is um, why is gossip and complaining like cancer? Let me, let me and this this all just kind of blow through so we can get to more of the more of the questions here. First off, it can't be easily removed. Even if cancer is in one spot and you you have to remove it through surgery, 
you still have to have surgery and there is still a toll on your body. It's a small toll as compared to other, but there is no such thing as removing cancer where it doesn't affect anything else in the body. See what I mean? And it's the same thing with gossip and complaining. It's not this, it's not something you can take out that doesn't affect anybody else. Oh, well, let's say, for instance, Zach is complaining about everybody, or gossiping about everybody, right? Even if Zach learns not to do that in, in a quickish pace, it will not have not affected everybody else. So that means it will affect everybody else. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, causes unhealthy church development. Cancer is a cell that is not doing the thing that it's supposed to be doing. When we gossip and complain, we are not doing the things that we are supposed to be doing. And so what it does is the same way as a cancer cell causes unhealthy growth. Remember, cancer cells grow very rapidly. The same way gossip grows very rapidly, and it causes an unhealthy growth in the church. Does that make sense? Okay. And then the third thing, um, if uh, cancer affects other cells around it, okay, in the same way gossip affects other people around it. See what I mean? You cannot be around a gossip and not... Um, be impacted by it. Does that make sense? Okay. So, gossip and complaining are the cancers of the church. So, what is gossip? What is gossip? What, what, what do you think it is? Talking about people who aren't around. Okay. Um, things that are not necessarily confirmed. Okay. Um, or even if they are, shouldn't necessarily be shared. <laughs> yeah. I think those are some good answers. Huh? Does anybody else, have, anybody else have something to say? I don't think there's ever any good intentions in gossip. Yeah. You don't say, you don't gossip to somebody with good intentions to lift somebody up or else you wouldn't mm. be gossiping about you wouldn't be saying anything. Hmm. So I think gossip is more <coughs> Okay. And very intentional. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Um the definition of a gossip, I think you guys hit it pretty well. Um, revealing secrets, um, someone who, who reveals a secret, um, uh, someone who shares scandal, someone who creates scandal. Um, now, uh, I, I personally don't feel like gossip is confined to malicious intents because there are some people who gossip so much and so often that they don't even know that they're gossiping anymore. You know what I mean? Like they are just, you go around them and they can't, they can't talk about anything else. You know what I mean? And, and they don't necessarily mean to, per se, but their mouth is just always going. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> you know. You know. You know what I mean. I do know. What yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and and so I think that there are different kinds of gossips, and I think that there are, that the, the the gossip Serena is talking about is a very harmful gossip. But I think sometimes we gossip without intention as well. Were you gonna say something? Well, and, 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 and that, that is true. And I guess malicious, there can be obviously malicious gossip. But I just mean, usually when you're gossiping about somebody, it's usually to make yourself feel better. Feel better. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Like, yeah. did you see what Gracie did? Yeah. Because you want to make yourself yeah. feel better. Yeah. You know, so I guess not necessarily malicious, but you do have intentions yeah. that are not good truly at yeah. heart if you're going to say something about it. And the bad thing is when you've been gossiping so long that you don't even realize that that's what you're doing. That's when you know that this is something that needs, well, it needs to stop anyways. But that's when it's like, wow, you've gone into the deep end. And I think it's becomes, I think it becomes very <coughs> psychological and deliberate. It becomes almost a coping <coughs> mechanism to cope with your yeah. own issues. More. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So someone who shares scandal... Someone who talks about others. Um, sometimes, sometimes it seems so innocent, and I don't mean the person who's gossiping. I mean the person who's listening to the gossip. You don't even realize what's going on. You just seem so innocent. Oh, they're just you know whatever. You're not really even paying attention. And before you know, it, it's like, yeah. wow, how did that go there? You know what I mean? You didn't even intend to gossip yeah. with this person, and yet you got <laughs> sucked into it. Yeah. And you're actually adding to it at this point. It's like, wait, how did that even happen? You know what I mean? Also, gossip to vent. 
Yeah. But you're, you're, you're taking out the lesson. Preventing. You're taking out the lesson. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why do people gossip? Go ahead, Serena. <laughs> I mean, this is sad. I'm like going off because I think that gossip is really, it's a huge thing yeah. that I think we all struggle with. Yeah. And like you said, we don't always notice we're doing it. Yeah. We're venting about somebody. Like, and this uh, person really frustrates yeah. me. And it could be about your spouse, your friend, your mom. And that's where it's, it's not malicious. It's just frustration. Yeah. And, and. I, 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 hold on just a second, Zach. I really want to build off something she just said. Um, oh, no, brain fart. Um, you were saying... Crap, dang it. You do it to vent frustration. Um, you do it to loved ones. You gossip about even loved ones. Oh, man, it was... It was Complaining it was, about your spouse. No, it, no, it was something you said, and I was just like... Yeah, oh, I remember. Um, everyone gossips, at least to some degree, in some point of, of the given year. Everyone does. Now, there are people who are habitual gossips, but then everybody gossips a little bit. You know what I mean? And so I think this, the, I think that that's important to note because this lesson is literally applicable to anyone, even if you are not one of those habitual gossips. So, uh, Zach, you were going to say something. Uh, usually it happens, especially around work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you about this. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Hey. <laughs> Um, I think also some people gossip because they feel like they're um, they're really worried, and so they want to talk to somebody about a situation, and it just it, turns into it, gossip. It turns into gossip instead of going to, you know to God and say, "Hey God, I'm so worried about da 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 da," you know. Yeah. They go to like and, their and, spouse or someone. Yeah, else. and 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 let's add on that um, the people who say, you know, I, I I'm I'm what is it, it um. I'm just concerned. I'm, concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really concerned about Chuck. <laughs> he wants to start this program called the Oasis. <laughs> so um, these are just some reasons, not an exhaustive list by all means, to get you on their side. Sometimes people gossip because they're in the middle of something and they want kind of like a preemptive strike. In case crap hits the ceiling, I don't want these people to know how it actually happened. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Kind of like a um. Let me share my side. Yeah, like like building a wall of defense. So just in case something right. happens, you're you're protected, like insurance. Okay. Damage control. Damage control. Yes. Damage control. Uh, to let you know. Um, I just wanted to let you know. Or when when you have to start a conversation with a statement, I don't. Or I don't mean to gossip, but. <laughs> These are usually red flags, like, wait, 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 You know, if it is common knowledge, they probably don't need to be told anyways. Right. I'm just throwing that out there, because it's common knowledge. But if it's not common knowledge, then don't call it common knowledge. It's an attempt. They posted it on their Facebook anyways. So now I'm going to critique what they said. They're wrong because of this, this, and this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, to build themselves up uh serena said this right was that you yeah uh to, to build themselves up you know oftentimes when we tear someone else down it feels really good for us serena did this and it was so dumb i didn't do that but she did you know what I, you, you, you know <laughs> you know and we get a certain rise out of that we get a certain yeah contentment you know <laughs> now i'm telling you i'm telling you so that you don't make the same mistake <laughs> As she did. As she did. Like, then why don't you share a story about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> or leave out all names or relations. All hey, names that is a pastor's <laughs> favorite tool. Oh my gosh. My I heard God. this story about this guy one time. <laughs> <laughs> um, With my cousin. Uh, <laughs> uh, brain fart. We're on the last one, I guess. Um, to release the need to be heard. Sometimes. Sometimes. People who feel overlooked or ignored um, will gossip in an attempt to get someone to notice what they're what they're saying, someone to notice them or to care about them. Okay. Yes. Um, obviously, this is a little bit more of a uh, I don't want to say gray, but a little bit of a more touchy situation because it's not so much just plain ordinary gossip as it is they are in a place of hurt. Where they're trying to remedy it with gossip, so it's it's a little bit more 
I don't know if the right word is precarious or um, a little bit more where you have to walk on glass on this one. You know, and, and sometimes people do bad things because they've been hurt and such. What is it that our professor used to always say? Hurt pe exactly. Hurt people hurt people. And so sometimes it's not as simple as... I'll give you an example. I'll use Eli because you guys all know Eli, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's say, hypothetically, Eli didn't do this. Let's say Eli starts lying about something. And, you know... Serena says, well, why are you starting to lie? You, you don't lie like this. What is going on? You know, and it kind of turns out that, you know, uh, maybe he's being picked on at school or something, and he, and he wants people to, to, to believe him or to give him attention, so he's acting out and lying. See what I mean? It's not as simple as lying. See what I mean? It's, it's something inside that he feels hurt. That he is causing that outside thing. See what I mean? So sometimes when you're done with people with gossip, or when you are gossiping, you need to realize when you need Help. You know what I mean? Um, and obviously, we'll look at this in the future, but you know, things that can only be sought, resolved in prayer and in worship and trying to f resolve them in some other way. Um, but it, regardless, if, it, it, that, that's for if you are the one going through it, but if you know someone is going through it, sometimes without listening to the gossip or joining to the gossip, you have to still... Make yourself available. It's very difficult to do, but it's something you can't really be taught how to do. It's something that you just have to lean on the guides of the Holy Spirit to do it. Um, I do give a very big word of warning with this, though, because, um, for instance, in churches where there's conflicts and something, there'll be always the, there'll always be that someone who's just trying to you know give an ear for someone to unwind on, um, and it turns out they just get sucked into the gossip because they're just sitting there listening to it. See what I mean? So um, be very careful with that. Just uh, I, I'm, the reason why, only reason why I'm saying this is just be patient with others. What is it that Jesus said? Um, do unto others as you would have them do to you. you know, it <laughs> very much applies here. If you want people to be patient to you when you mess up, make sure you're patient to others when you mess when they mess up. So, what do you do when someone's gossiping? Or what should you do? What should you do when someone's gossiping? Can I use an example? You can use an example. Okay, so someone close to me <laughs> was gossiping about someone else in, in our family. That she, she, it's a girl. Uh oh. Even... We've narrowed it down now. It's Gracie. <laughs> no. Yeah, there's lots of, of women. In the family. <laughs> was go it was on my side of the family was gossiping about someone in the family that they didn't even know. And, she, and she's going on, and she's obviously very upset and bitter and angry about this person. And and I just told her point blank, you know, look, you know them on Facebook. They, people only post what they want you to see. You don't know their life. <laughs> so don't get so upset about what somebody is posting. Get to know them before yeah. you get angry. Yeah. And, 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 and I said, and besides, what this person does, do you even know them? Why no. are you so upset about what no. they do? Just calm. I think that's a good example. <laughs> does anybody else have anything else to add? What do you do in someone's classroom? You redirect. Should, should, you, should you do? Yeah. <laughs> redirect. Anything else besides redirect? I'll walk away. Walk away? Okay. Anything else? Turn them out. Okay. Yeah. Not listening. Not anymore. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else before I go to the thing? Kill them? <laughs> Kill them would work. That would stop the gossip. Cut out the cancer. Cut that sucker out. Don't listen. It's none of your business and isn't good or nice. I think, uh, was that you who said that? Yeah. Um, yeah, first off, don't listen. You know, if, if realize that, realize what is and what is not your business. You know, and some things that are said, it's like, well, I don't really have any business knowing that. Um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, there's things at work that I try to yeah. keep busy. I stay in the back. <laughs> um, and then also, is it good and is it nice? You know, is this something that 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 yeah. is a good thing to know? Like, hey, Eli won the spelling bee. Okay, well, that's a good thing to know, right? Or, hey, um, 
uh, Nicole made a great cake. Well, that's nice. So, I mean, is, is it good or is it nice? Is this something that's that's going to benefit someone somewhere? It's on crack. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> um, walk away. Diana, Diana said this one. Um, w- always ask this before you start saying something, before you start telling someone. Is it true? This is called the think principle. T-H-I-N-K. Is it true? Is it honest? Is it inspiring? Necessary kind. Think. T, true, honest, inspiring, necessary, kind. Um, and that's just a, a good list to, to go through before you start talking about something. Is it true? Are the thing are, Is the thing that you're saying something that you know for a fact, 100%, not that you heard, that you know, and that is, you know, it, it, it's true, it is factual, based on reality? Um, is it honest? Is it something that's based not on a preconceived bias or, or, or you know, whatever, but you are just, um, you are being open, if you will. Um, is it inspiring? Does it encourage the pe- people? Gossip will not encourage people. It will make you feel better at, at the moment, but it won't encourage people. Um, is it necessary? Is it something that, that needs to be said? And is it kind? Because even if you say the right thing, if you lack the right heart, it's not going to be the right thing. You know what I mean? You know, like when God gives you a word to say to somebody and you kind of say it in an ugly tone. Even if you what you say is true, people just don't really listen, you know. Um, so, um, tell them, um, uh, lastly, tell them it isn't right, but in a good way. So we can't walk up to them and say, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> Also, it, um, when the, it, like, let's say they're saying stuff in front of a large group. You don't want to call them out in front of a large group usually. Yeah. yeah. Um, because this will just shame them and cause them to withdraw from you and cause everybody to kind of look down on both of you in different circumstances. Uh-huh. It's just a bad thing to do. Right. There are a few situations where I've seen that maybe calling them out in front of them was at that moment in time was necessary, but and those are just maybes. Maybes. Generally, it doesn't go very good when this happens. If you have a beef with someone, pull them aside afterwards and say something. Just don't send them a text or a letter. For the love of God, don't send people text or letters. <laughs> that's, just, that's just a dumb thing to do. All it does is irritate people. Um, and also, it releases you from, from the bondage of actually... Um, Having to communicate yeah, with them. Yeah, and trying to restore them. that person, you know. Um, remember, what does Pastor always say all the time? We do. We have to. We have to be in it for their best interest. We are. Rest, we are trying to restore them to proper relationship with God and people. Right? That's what Pastor is always saying, um, and it very much so applies. Um, why is gossip bad? Water. Come here, water. <laughs> oh, there you are. Why is gossip bad? Because it can be destructive to relationships. Uh-huh. Okay. It causes other people to feel insecure, you know. Okay. Talk about me, and then people are paranoid that can, people are talking about me. Uh, so it ruin causes trust. insecurity. Yeah. Hmm. What? Ruin trust. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Anything else? If I just stare at Ben, eventually somebody will answer something. <laughs> Maybe Ben? When you, a- when you end every single question with Ben? <laughs> <laughs> it can give other people the wrong idea. Like, what do you um, mean? It, it never seems to fail that when someone's gossiping to you, you always seem to believe it and not question it. You know, most of the time. And hmm. so, say that you... Like telling, you take it for a fact. Yes. And so, say that you were telling me something bad about Diana. Oh, man, I don't want to be friends with Diana anymore. You said you wouldn't tell her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's, it, 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 I mean, like, go along with destructive, but it also gives other people the wrong idea about... I mean, because it could be lies. Because I know, I know I, uh, someone that they, they gossip, but it's all lies hmm. and so they, when they gossip to the other people they they of course gossip about me as well and the other people believe the lies even though 
they know that person got supplies, you mm. know. So. Mm. Mm. Anything else? I think um, I think you guys are pretty on track with this stuff. Causes bad feelings to resurface or appear. Let's say, for instance, I'm talking to someone about someone else, and they don't even hardly know this person, like Serena's example. Oh, right. Or let's say they, they don't know them. I don't. It doesn't matter. They will start an, getting an attitude even if you are talking without an attitude. Yeah. I'll give you an example. You know, um, okay, Zach's going to be the person I'm talking about. I'm talking to Chuck, okay? So, um, so Zach uh, hit a, hit Colt the other day, and uh, I, I think he'll be fine though. So I mean, I'm not saying it with a bad attitude, but even if I'm not saying it in a bad attitude, I'm saying something negative. negative to him, who's now going to be upset towards him when he doesn't. He has not verified the facts of this. First off, uh, second off, he's taking offense for someone else. Okay, let's let's wind things down and get facts first. And he's going to get a bad attitude towards Zach when Zach doesn't even know what's going on. Now let's let's say, for instance, um, it, as it turns out, uh, Colt was um, stole something, and so Zach spanked him. Well, that changes the story of quite a bit, doesn't it? See what I mean? So Chuck would have been guilty of, of, of bad feeling towards Zach that wasn't even necessarily the truth. But regardless of whether it was the truth or not, that doesn't justify us having a bad attitude. See what I mean? Yeah. That makes sense. Micah 6 8 says to act justly but to love mercy. It doesn't say to love justice. It says to act justly but to love mercy. Understand the difference there, okay? Just because you do what's right doesn't mean you have to love it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this person needs to be punished and you're enjoying every second of it. That's not what the Bible says. It says to love mercy but to act justly. Okay? Um, <coughs> so it causes bad feelings to resurface or to appear. Um, share, um, shares details that weren't meant to be shared. I think Chuck already mentioned this. Let's say, for instance, Zach did something that he doesn't want other people to know about. So a few people know. And so I say, oh, it's common knowledge because a few people know. But if he doesn't want it to be known, and only those few select people know, see what I mean? I'm sharing details that he didn't want known. Even if they weren't that big of a deal to me, they may have been big deal to him. Yeah. See what I mean? And that's the dividing line. Not what you think, but what the other person thinks, because they're the person that you're sharing the details about, right? Right. So it doesn't matter what you think, right? See what I mean? You have to think, how is this going to affect that person? How are they going to respond? If Zach wanted that detail known, don't you think he would have told other people? See what I mean? And that's what um, what 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 gossip. Why gossip is, is bad. Uh, one of the reasons. Um, it shames people. It causes people to feel like you know they're they're somehow less worthy. Even when you're gossiping to someone, like the example where I was gossiping to Chuck, um, it may make him feel inferior. Like oh, maybe I'm doing something wrong too. Obviously not in the example that I used because he doesn't have a kid. But you you see what I'm saying, right? Um, or it could you know in that example it could also shame. Zach, or let's say I'm talking to Chuck about this, and Nicole overhears, and she says, you know, you're gossiping, you need to stop. So now I'm shamed. So I mean, shame somebody somewhere down the road, somebody's going to get shamed unnecessarily. So I mean, it doesn't have to be like that. Um, and it distracts from what is important. Distracts from what is important. So, you know. Um, yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and let that one lie. Uh, so what does the Bible say about gossip? Let's look at some passages here. Proverbs 11, 12 through 13. Can I ask a question about that for 13 verses? Yes. Okay. Say in that situation. Which one? The one uh, with Zach? Yeah, where Zach hit okay. his kid. Okay, say he actually hit his kid. Mm -hmm. However, he babysits Chuck's kid. Oh. So you tell Chuck that you saw him hit his own kid. Because you're concerned about Chuck's kid. So now it's a gossip. That is a really difficult situation. That's not an easy answer. Um, I would say it depends on a number of things. First off, was this the first time he did it? Was it a serious thing, like, or did he just like, you know, let's say for instance, you just like tapped him on the mouth or something like that? Let's okay. say that he spanked him too before he left the park. Okay. Well, that 
Maybe, but it would probably be best to start off with talking to Zach, unless it was child abuse. In which case, I would recommend strongly going to the state about that, because that's something that child abuse is happening, and we need to stand up for kids. We, yeah. that's that's nonsense. Right. That that whole that whole bullcrap of just sitting by, I'm sitting by while kids are being no, no, no. Um, so in that case, I would do that, and then it would surface anyways, so I wouldn't see it as that big of a problem. Um, so it, once again, kind of, it kind of depends the situation. You would really have to make sure that it was something with, that you were comfortable with doing at the time. Okay. For instance, if you're not comfortable with him, Zach watching Chuck's kid. See, what I mean, well, that's different. And then it, it, you, it, the, even the way you delivered it could be different. Look, Chuck. I don't want to start. I don't want to start anything. Okay. I just want you to know because I don't think this is right. Um, you know, Zach did this, and I'm concerned for your for your child. I thought you should know. But I, you know, and then just cut it off right there. Don't let it go any further. So, I mean, if you have to say something, make sure it's quick to the point and done. So just so everybody's clear on the same page, Zach did not abuse his child. Okay. No. Chuck doesn't even have a child. Okay. We're all on the yeah. same page. <laughs> We're all on the same page. Okay. Uh, because this is going online, I don't want people to be like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disclaimer. Okay, so to now take that to a, a not serious example. Okay. Okay, say that um, we have a, a common acquaintance that um, cuts hair. You're going to go get your hair cut from him. Let's but say it's I, Zach. I, I Can it be Zach again? Zach. Okay, yes. so Zach cuts hair, and okay. I know that Zach ter does a terrible job, but you don't know this. So <laughs> I want to tell you. I see exactly where you're going, Zach. Like. Because he's going to give you a bad haircut, and then you're going to have that awkward, you know. Well, like see. sharing information. Like, like yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be gossip. Right. You know what I mean? It, it could be this simple. Um, I got a haircut from him, and I didn't really like it. Just, right. you know, so, so and then move on. That's not gossip, I mean? even though you're saying something negative about them, technically. <laughs> well, see. It, it, giving a review on their performance. Whether it is well, just be like, hey, check out my Yelp review. Could you just say, I wouldn't have... Zach babysit your child anymore. I can't explain the situation. Oh, we're back on I that. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought we were on the hair now. <laughs> on the hair. I, um, I, um, you said you're gonna go to Zach for a haircut. I wouldn't do it. Um, I'm not gonna go in the situation, but. Okay. See right there, you've made it. You yeah, made. You made it obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See what I mean? You, you, right you made it dramatic when it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Hey Ben, I didn't really. I got a, I got a haircut from Zach. Maybe he didn't really care for it. I think I don't think he did a very else. good job. But yeah, or you could just do that. Be like, well, I went a, to this guy and he was really great. A great well, example. I want to try them. How about this? Hint, hint. How about this? If Zach abused his child. Oh. Oh, we're on that hair. again. Okay. <laughs> All right. I really thought we were on hair. Okay, everybody, take the hair and put a pin in it. Back to the child abuse. They're really worried about this kid, aren't They're they? really, really That's worried. That is more serious. If Zach abused his child and Chuck was going to leave him with him, don't you think maybe if you know about it, you take it upon yourself to, to confront Zach instead of him and say, but I think that you need is, to is be Zach gonna honest. Is Zach going to go tell Chuck then, oh, I hit my kid, so do you want to leave your kid with me? I mean, well, you need Zach, to tell, are you? Well, yeah, maybe if you have. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Just go to the pastor and tell him to tell me. <laughs> okay, no. Don't ever do that. I know no. she said that as a joke, but just making sure everybody understands. No. No. Okay, we have other stuff to worry about besides solving all y'all's problems. No. Um, so, okay, let's wind this back in. Um, I think that that only has benefit, my personal opinion, I think that that only has benefit if you are trying to um, get draw Zach towards repentance. Not so much for the sake of protecting a child. That really doesn't have that much view, in my opinion, because usually, like Ben said, first off, Zach's not going to go to check and say, hey, by the way, I did this. Usually. The grand majority of the times. Um, and second off, is yes, that's kind of an awkward conversation. When people feel awkward, they get defensive, and when people get defensive, they tend to lash out. It's possible, but I don't know. I, I, it doesn't have to be this complicated, though, guys. <laughs> He would not be able to watch kids anyways. They would right, right. right. But, right. but so. on that note, the state fails most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. No, they usually they'll take them away. They just give them back, them back too soon. <laughs> oh, I see that you still have some drugs in your... It's fine, take them out. Take them out, we can't do anymore. 
<laughs> I would have beat them too. I'm, I'm just. But okay, so are you seeing what I'm saying? If somebody's life is in danger, that's a little bit different, and you don't have to make it a thing of gossip. Okay. Now, if it's a, if it's something where somebody's life is not in danger, it doesn't have to be gossip either. It's how you deliver it, your attitude when you say it, and just the fact of of what needs to be said. And once again, if you are draw, if you are guiding the conversation, if you're leaving the conversation open where it can go to gossip. It's different than if you just simply say something that needs, be, that needs to be said and then move on. For instance, let's say uh, I'll use the exact same example. Let's say Diana's gonna get Zach's uh, get her hair cut from Zach, and I know that Zach's terrible at cutting hair. <laughs> when I'm saying, you know, I don't think that you're uh, well. I could say it in a hundred different ways. Um, you know, well, if I had gotten a haircut from him, I was I did not think that it was that that great. I know someone else who does it better and then just move on to the next thing see what i mean it doesn't have to be something that you dwell on this conversation however once again is it something necessary and you can you can say it in different ways so now that that was totally taken into or, different or, areas or, and or, darker or, yeah, get the horrible haircut you can just start singing some people gotta learn the hard way <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, um but you know sometimes i found what people do is they actually go to you anyways and say hey um you, I'm thinking about doing this with this. Would you think this is a good idea? Like hiring Zach to watch your, watch my kids, or do, 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 or in that in such a situation, you could say, "Well, I know someone who's who's really good." You know, let's say I don't know if I don't know if Zach's a good child watcher, whatever. Um, child babysitter. That's the word, babysitter. Then then I would say something along the lines of, then I would say the, something along the lines of, "I don't know, but I know this person. I know that they're really good." See what I mean? Or let's say um, I do, and I'm not. Wasn't that? Are you guys getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of. Um, just watch out because your words care. Is what does James say? say stuff. Yeah. What does James say? The mouth is such a small thing, yet it sets great force uh -huh. ablaze. Just be careful. So, uh, 16:28. I'm sorry, I didn't even do 11, 12, 13, 13. Zach, I mean Ben over <laughs> here flustered me. <laughs> You guys, you should have seen what Ben did last week. Um, okay, starting in verse 12. Whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding remains silent. Belittles his neighbor lacks sense. But whoever, um, what is it the word says um, specifically? Um, but a man of understanding remains silent. Okay? Um, whoever goes about slandering um, reveals... Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets. Gossip is a is someone who reveals secrets. Um, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing um, covered. You can trust that person because they keep it covered. See what I mean? So, um, 16.28. Um, a dishonest man spreads strife and a whisperer separates close friends. See, see what it said there? A dishonest man spreads strife. He causes problems where there aren't. Um, and a whisperer separates close friends. You know, like what do you do when you're gossiping? You usually and gossiping. You usually have a have a lowered voice. Hey, Serena, Zach's terrible at cutting hair. <laughs> see what I mean? Um, a whisperer separates close friends. You're causing issues between people. See what I mean? You're not causing the whole idea of Christianity renewal. You're causing something completely opposite to that. Um, 17.9. Uh, whoever cover, covers an offense seeks love. Covers an offense seeks love. Uh, but he who repeats a matter separates close friends. What does that mean? Um, let's say, for instance, um, Ben did something three years ago, and I just keep bringing it up. You who are you who are married, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Your spouse did something last month, and you're still going on about it. He who repeats a matter separates close friends. If you want a divorce, the quickest way is just keep bringing up the past, bringing it back up. Go ahead, keep doing it, but eventually you will be divorced, or your marriage will be so terrible that you won't even want to be married anyways. So regardless, um, but he who repeats a matter separates close friends. Let it lie in the past. Let it lie in the past. And this is why pastor's always talking about the way that you can't really forgive someone until you forget it. This is what he's talking about. Until you leave it in the past, you really can't for forgive someone. 
Because it's constantly going over in your head. You're replaying it. You're thinking of all the things you could say as comebacks. You think about this and that and the other thing. You know what I mean? You're always thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Every time you, your spouse or your friend or your daughter or your whatever, your whatever, hurts your feelings, you bring it back up. See what I mean? As someone who does that separates people. It does, there's there's no renewal between those people. Um, that was 17.9, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 2019... Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. Don't associate with them. Why? Because you're going to get caught into it. You're going to get caught into it. Um, Matthew 5, 9. Eh, these big Bibles. <laughs> there it is. Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. It's the people who make peace. Chaos is going on. People are talk talking about, Ben's talking about, Zach, Diana's talking about, uh, Chuck, you know, Nicole's talking about, Serena. You bring peace to the situation. A peacemaker. Pastor's talked about this so many times, I, I, I literally have it pounded in my sleep. Not someone who enjoys peace, but someone who makes peace. So, um, Matthew seven twelve. <coughs> so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Um, basically what he's saying there is the entire Old Testament is based on that. Um, which is then reiterated later, earlier, I don't know, somewhere in Matthew where he says, you know, um, all the law and prophets saying on loving God and loving people. He doesn't say it like that, but that's what he says. Romans 1, 28-32. 1, 28-32. And since they do not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips. In the midst of all that stuff, he threw gossips in the same slew, the same rut, okay? Slanderers, which goes along with, with gossips. You're slandering someone, you're slandering God, whatever the object is. Haters of God, insolent, haughty, uh, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. It sounds like a lot of bad things. Gossip was right in the middle of it, too. See that? Um, and then James 4, 11 through 12. As you can see, the Bible has quite a bit to say about gossip. And, it, and the Bible also spends a lot of time telling us what we should be saying. And so sometimes it won't say specifically, do not gossip, although it does say that elsewhere. But it, some places won't say that. They'll just say, um, think on these things. Encourage one another in the faith. You know, they'll say other things, and obviously gossip is not consistent with those other things. You know what I mean? How could you be encouraging someone in the faith if you're gossiping? See what I mean? So it's kind of implied. Um, James 4, 11 through 12. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and to destroy, but who are you to judge your neighbor? And then down in 5.9, um, do not uh, grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Basically, what he's, what he's saying is uh, when, you, um, when you judge someone else, you are opening yourself up to be judged by God. So, um, don't justify gossip, and somebody already mentioned this, don't justify gossip because of family, position, or friendship. <coughs> oh, like, I think it was Serena, you know, justifying the, justifying the gossip because it's, you know, um, the issue, you know, with your family, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, we're, we're, you know, justifying it. It's not bad because of this, or because of your position. Well, I'm the parent, so I can, or I'm the wife, so I can, or I'm the daughter so I can or I'm the you fill in the blank okay or obviously you guys aren't daughters or wives okay or mothers okay uh, or friendship you know like let's say for instance Chuck and I are real close and so I feel like I can just tell him anything even when it's not good about someone else 
See what I mean? Mm -hmm. Don't justify gossip by those things. Um, so the question of the week, why does it matter if I complain? Why does that even matter? As Serena said um, earlier in the lesson, I'm just venting. What does it matter? Because you can. Da, da, next week. <laughs> you write down your answer on the sheet, girl. Oh. This, no, this is something I want you to think about throughout the week. Oh, oh. The no. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, the question of the week. Yes. Ponder. Yeah. The next and you might want to write it down because I'm going to ask y'all what y'all thought. <laughs> Everybody got it? Yeah. Wait, so I can think I work.